Hello everybody and welcome back to the Celestial Perch. Today I have a new video, or at least a new type of video. I will be uh, doing kind of a deep dive into ethics, individual ethic, and we'll be going over a fanatic and regular version with each video. Now the reason why I'm doing this now is because we're kind of approaching the like Christmas and other holiday season and it's going to be a bit harder for me to get out more of like the long form videos where you know like they're 20 minutes 15 minutes plus these will just seek to be a little bit shorter maybe like five to ten minutes a bit easier for me to edit not as much time and i can kind of use these to fill in between uh like while i'm working on the other longer form videos and i am working on uh, a few videos right now i have a, a a new basic build coming out for a machine empire and I have a new civic deep dive I'm working on as well. And then in the background, kind of like on the horizon, I'm working on a uh, kind of like weapons testing build uh, or video where I just look at different weapons and see how they do within the early to mid game. And as well, slowly but surely working on the, the third installment of the new player guide and the, uh, the next covenant video as well. So lots of stuff in the works, but these are just going to kind of be like a nice fill in for me. Uh, something that I think will still be useful for a lot of players because e even seasoned players, they might prefer specific ethics or use specific ethics more. They might not necessarily know the benefits or downsides to other ethics. And this could also help new players who are looking to maybe dip their toes into a few new ethics and kind of see what they do and how they work. And the format of this video will be, we'll look at each ethic, uh, fanatic, and regular. And we'll kind of go over the principles, the description, the benefits, and just kind of like the drawbacks as well. And then similar to the civic deep dives, we'll give them a rating on a scale of A to F at the end. And you can kind of just click through each video depending on which one you want to look at. But we will start with authoritarian. So looking at authoritarian, and for future reference, we will be moving clockwise. So the next ethic deep dive will be spiritualist. But looking at authoritarian, we can see that we have two just upfront bonuses. These are plus one influence or plus 0.5 monthly influence, depending on if we are the fanatic or regular version, and plus 10% worker job output and plus 5% worker job output. We'll start with these and then work our way down through the principles as well as policies. So looking at the authoritarian benefits just up front, the influence will help us expand. Um, unfortunately, authoritarian kind of got a slight nerf with the unity rework as a lot more stuff used to cost influence. So now you'll find yourself, uh, if you're not making too many claims within the mid game or early game, you're really going to have just a quite a large surplus of influence. Not to say that influence is like useless or worthless, it's just not as useful as it used to be. So authoritarian kind of took a slight hit there. You can definitely still get a lot of mileage out of each of these in terms of influence is most useful at the start of the game and bonuses that help you at the start of the game tend to be better than bonuses that help you at the end of the game. So being able to make it to specific choke points or systems and making sure that you can fortify those quick enough to defend yourself from either the AI or your friends or multiplayer, uh, you know, that does have its uses. And then looking at the worker job output, um, something that might be, you know, immediately compared to would be strong and very strong. And very strong is a trait that's generally not taken because it's kind of weak. But here for authoritarian, you'd get either very strong or double very strong with the Fnatic variant. Now, worker job output, these are any worker within your um, worker strat. So keep in mind that it's not just going to be energy, minerals, and uh, food. It will be any job within the worker strata. So I'll put some of those up here on the screen. And it does have its uses. There's kind of a debate within players in general as what is better? worker uh, job output or specialist job output. And it can depend on your situation. Generally speaking, people lean towards specialist job output, but I don't think worker job output is that far behind and maybe in cer certain circumstances could even be better as you sort of need the worker job output, the food, minerals, and energy 
to actually provide for those jobs that are specialists. So authoritarian will help your early game economy and your early game expansion, which are both useful. But we can move on to the actual principles and policies that they get, which kind of further help develop authoritarian as a relatively powerful ethic. So, moving on to our principles, and this is where authoritarian gets a lot more powerful. Uh, starting, we have information quarantine. Uh, you have this at the start of the game, and it will net you plus 5 stability on all of your planets, as well as plus 50% governing ethics attraction. Now, as we've talked about before in other videos, stability is just extra resources from jobs, extra trade value, and some immigration pull. It will also mean that we won't need to have as many people working amenities jobs, as our stability will be naturally just higher. And pairing this with something like Police State will mean that all of your planets at the start of the game will have plus 10 stability, which is quite powerful. And the governing ethics traction, while not as impactful at the start of the game, over the course, if you leave this on, will reduce the chance that some of your pops stray away from your governing ethics and are not as happy. So those are two rather powerful bonuses tied into just one edict that Authoritarian gets. And the other benefit is that we get access to Stratified Economy Living Standards. Now, Stratified Economy Living Standards is very, very powerful, as this will reduce your consumer goods upkeep by quite a bit, comparing to something like Decent Conditions, where your worker pops have 0.25 consumer goods upkeep. Uh, Stratified Economy, your pops have your worker pops have 0.1 consumer goods upkeep. So it will greatly reduce your consumer goods consumption as well as your worker pops political power, which will mean they'll, they will have little effect on the overall planet approval and stability. Whereas your leaders, comparing again to decent conditions, whereas decent condition rulers have plus 10% happiness and plus 700% political power, stratified economy has plus 15% happiness, and plus 900% political power. So the more ruler jobs you have, and just in general, the more rulers you have on a planet, will greatly impact your stability. And you can affect this in various ways, either through aristocratic elite, uh, building science director jobs through either buildings, or technocracy, uh, as well as the mercantile tradition will gain you access to merchants, which are also a ruler position. But Stratified Economy makes it very easy to manage your stability. Uh, pairing that with the information quarantine makes it almost a non-issue. And then also will reduce your consumer goods upkeep so that you can focus more on alloys and tech. And those are the two kind of main principal benefits. Now looking at the last principal benefit for Authoritarian, you get access to slaves. And slaves are a extremely powerful species of rights within Stellaris as it will reduce the base amenity usage and base housing usage, as well as just the general political power. And depending on the species rights or species that you're using, you can actually specialize slaves to either be specifically uh, designed for worker jobs, and you can even have slaves within specialist jobs if you're using indentured servitude. Uh, just keep in mind that between the types of slave types, there are various benefits. I'm not going to get too much in depth here, but just the most common ones being uh, chattel slavery and indentured servitude, uh, both good for either worker jobs or specialist jobs respectively. It's just slaves can be a bit micromanagey compared to other empire types where you might not have to worry about species rights beyond just making everyone a citizen. So it does give you some solid benefits in terms of amenities and housing usage, as well as just reduced political power meaning that they will have little to no impact on the overall planet's approval rating, as long as you have uh, ruler jobs or specialist jobs filled with your native species that have high political power. But we can move on to the last little bit of authoritarian, which is just which civics can be used and what authority type you have to take for each uh, variant. So the last two things to keep in mind is that if you are a regular authoritarian, you just cannot be democratic means you can have any of the other three ethics being uh, oligarchic, dictatorial, and imperial. And for a fanatic authoritarian, you have to be either imperial or dictatorial. Uh, keep in mind there are also some civics that require you to be authoritarian. I will put these up on the screen here. Um, but even if you are imperial or dictatorial, you don't actually have to have the authoritarian ethic. 
So if it requires that, you don't actually have to have authoritarian. So keep that in mind when you're designing your empires. But overall, looking at authoritarian, I would say authoritarian is probably within the A tier. Now remember, we're going on an A plus to F minus. So I would say authoritarian non-fanatic variant is probably A tier. And the fanatic authoritarian variant, it's going to be a lot lower, but actually probably somewhere within B minus. As you don't really gain much with authoritarian, you actually lose a bit in the sense that you can no longer be oligarchic and the plus 5% worker job output and plus 0.5 monthly influence just really doesn't make up for it. And really you just need to splash authoritarian, so to speak. There isn't as much of a benefit for going the fanatic variant, which is why it kind of lands within that B minus tier. But overall authoritarian is still very, very powerful and taking it can give you various benefits. If for example, you don't want to go xenophobic for access to slaves. So authoritarian has its place and I think can fit into a wide variety of play styles and builds. But thank you and have a blessed day.